There we go. Joining me on the line as he does every Friday on the show. You can find him on social media at Mr. Controversy83. Ladies and gentlemen, from cinemablend.com, it is Mike Reyes. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Well, not much, B-Sox. How are you? Let's dive into movies because I'm great and fantastic. I am glad to hear that from you, sir. I'm not stressed at all anyways. <laughs> no, nothing going on here. You know what? Funny thing, the, uh, the other night I was sitting there and I'm like, I need to take some time off, man. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. Uh, What do we got for movies this week, Mike? Okay, so for movies, we've got a big return to action, and we've also got a smaller indie horror comedy. Okay. So I'll I'll start with the smaller film. Uh, There is a movie coming out this week. I believe it's in limited theatrical, but it should be available for Blu-ray and rental, a, a VOD rental soon after. It's uh, Benny Loves You. This is a, a uh, like I said, very independent horror comedy about a man named Jack who wants to get his life together. Uh, some li- circumstances have changed. He's a loser at work. He's a loser in life. He needs to grow up. He goes to throw away his childhood teddy bear named Benny, and disaster strikes. Is this like a okay, child's you- play type thing or something? Uh, it's... Similar, but the thing is, uh, I actually got to speak to the writer, director. He's the lead actor. Like, I got to speak to the man, Carl Holt. Okay. Uh, we got him on Overdue Rentals, uh, and that's how we saw the movie. But what happened was he told us about how, I think it was back in, it was a couple of years ago, he wrote and shot this movie. <laughs> and it was before the Child's Play remake was even yeah, a yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was before Prince had died. So there's a character wow. in this movie that's, like, obsessed with Prince wanted to, was going to see him in concert and he's like yeah i saw that the child's play movie was announced and i'm like what the hell that's my movie but <laughs> it, it's not actually his movie uh, benny loves you is more akin to something like gremlins in oh, fact okay. he has a lot of gremlins references in there it's a lot of fun and it kind of reminded me of uh edgar wright's sort of Shaun of the dead sort of humor where he's paying tribute to these sorts of horror movies, but he's also operating in that framework. Okay. The and only reason I asked about child's play, cause I, I pulled up, uh, I did a cert- quick search and uh, showed me the trailer and I just see a rat holding a knife. So I, I don't remember if he is a rat or a bear of some sort. It was, he originally, he did an original short with an Elmo. Okay. So well, that's what, yeah, it looks, I just said rat just to be funny, but yeah, yeah. it looks like, it looks like a de- Elmo's demented cousin, Benny. It's know. good. Okay. It's definitely a lot of fun. Quick, like, I think it was only about like an hour and a half or so. It's another one of those movies that's sort of opting for speed and results. And just, it was really cool to hear him talk about how it took him a while. Like he was, he got to a certain age and he's like, I want to be a filmmaker. It's, it's now or never. Yeah. And he just basically put, wore so many hats on this movie he like created uh, a fake pop group to do pop songs in the movie that were, it was just him. But he's like, I don't, he's so many people wore so many hats. He's like, okay, we're all going to have only two credits each. And then they invented like other names, I guess. Yeah, but, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know what? That's right up there with F I J I F I J I get jump in. Ah, you know what? That's yeah. Fiji. My, my dad, that's one of his uh, sayings. Sometimes you just got to say, it and jump in. I've been trying to get him to get FI on one ankle and JI on the other ankle tattooed. So when he jumps, that's what you read. Yeah, exactly. So Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com joining me on the line. So Benny loves you good. What's uh, what's the next movie? So the next movie is a big blockbuster action film. If you miss R-rated shooting people in the head, killing for vengeance, Jason Statham action, then Guy Ritchie's Wrath of Man is going to be your thing. And it basically centers around a man mysteriously known as H. He works for an armored car company. And there, this company seems to have the worst luck of all okay. getting hit by so many robbers. And then when he gets onto the job, they start getting some really good protection. There's some mysteries that need to be unraveled. Uh, there could be some betrayal. There's some secrets. And... It is, uh, it's actually a remake of a French movie called Le Convoyeur, or Cash Truck, but it's pretty solid. Uh, okay. Jason does what you hire him to do, you know, Jay, and in fact, that's what, uh, I, I spoke with Guy Ritchie and a couple other, uh, a couple of the actors in the film, and Guy Ritchie's like, talking about how Jason Statham is one of his favorite people to work with, because you hire Jason Statham, he really hasn't changed his style, it's not like he's trying to be anything but the best Jason Statham. Yeah. And 
that's what basically makes his part of it. Like, no matter what movie he's in, that's what makes his part of it work. Yeah. You hire Jason Statham, you know what you're getting. You know what you're watching. Yeah. And he's got this insane cross-generational appeal. Like Guy Ritchie was telling me, my mother loves him. My grandmother loves him. My father loves him. I love him. My kids love him. So it's like, it's kind of hard to go wrong casting it. This is the first time in 16 years they actually made a movie together. I was just thinking, what would you rather see Jason Statham in? A, like a romantic comedy or like something? What would be the other one that is just not a Jason Statham movie? Period drama. <laughs> but even then, even then, both of those he'd be able to do the shit out of because romantic comedy, he's just got to be charming, maybe a bit apologetic. He, do, he already has the humor down. And then with a period drama, especially if it's a, a a drama, he can be bitingly witty, but at the at, same time have that remorse. You say that, and you know what? Imagine him in a movie like This Means War. Oh, totally. He did Paul Feig's Spy, so that's basically like right next door to that. Well, he's actually got a spy movie coming out with Guy Ritchie at some point because it sounds like they went from – wrath a man to this one pretty quickly and josh hartnett's in it too which okay. josh hartnett is a cool dude to talk to if you ever get the chance talk to josh hartnett okay uh okay so wrath of man's pretty good huh yeah yeah it's it's a nice solid the story gets a little bit confused not confusing but it gets a little muddled because they do like a non-linear approach where that's like the, every guy Ritchie movie though yeah but in this case it really did. i i was thinking that myself it's like wait guy Ritchie's done this before but it's like in this case it kind of ruins the sort of man out for revenge vibe okay it's like if he's killing his way to the top i want you to start with that and then push because that's that's just you know you got to mount up the tension up to the point where he finally gets to the end this it starts him off in the middle and then jumps back to the inciting incident and then yeah. a little forward and then past the begin past the middle yeah the I'm just I'm looking back at like those movies and it's always rock and roll out, which I liked. I couldn't tell you anything about it at this point. It's been so long, but it, it, he's one of those guys you kind of got to take notes during. Like you can't. Yeah, we, we talked about yeah. it with uh, uh, Nolan a few shows ago, where it's like you have to be invested in that movie. You can't. Just, it's not a movie you just put in the, on in the background. Richie's m more easier to, to he's, slide into. Than he's that. easier, but you need to be paying attention. Similar. Like yeah, snatch. That's, that's yeah. You don't you don't just put snatch on in the background and hope for the best. Not unless you've seen it like eighty million times yeah, and then yeah, you just yeah. say them to do is do the joke about uh the gun. Mike Rays from CinemaBlid.com. Uh so Wrath of Man, is that uh, that's out in theaters, you said, right? Yes, that will be out in theaters today. Okay. What's the HBO Max one this week? Is there a new one out? Uh I don't think we've got one this week. Next week we should be getting Those Who Wish Me Dead with Angelina Jolie. So we'll keep an eye out for that one, folks, because we'll probably be talking about that. I should actually be getting a link for that. The only, the only reason I ask is because I uh, I saw Tenet showed up on HBO Max like last weekend or something. Yeah, it did. The, yeah, as part of the whole, you know, it, it, since it aired on HBO, it's now on HBO Max. And I need to watch it, but uh, I told my wife, I asked Steph, I'm like, do you want to watch this? No, not really. So I'm like, okay, maybe I'll watch that tonight. And like, it was one of those ones that's like, do I really want to dive into this at 10 o'clock on a Friday when I'm already tired? Don't you mean Tenet o'clock? <laughs> With jokes like that, your podcast is is sure to take off yeah well it's a good thing this is your podcast overdue rentals everybody find it on your favorite <laughs> podcast platforms don't hesitate follow now mike reyes from cinemablend.com <laughs> joining me <laughs> joining me on the line uh okay so that wraps up the movies uh what do we got for movie news anything it, it seemed like another week when there there was news but there wasn't anything that you went oh holy sh I can't believe that. It's just basically theaters are st theaters and studios are starting to gear up for the Memorial Day weekend. Uh, movie theaters opening in general. Um, we're looking at New York might be at full capacity, open and fully running by July first. Wow! So you know, studios are you know since Godzilla vs Kong made money and then Mortal Kombat made money, studios are kind of looking to inch up a little further. You see, Fast Nine just dropped a clip this week where. Uh, it's just an, a minute and a half of solid car. It's called total carnage. Uh, you want to yell at movie fans? But it's just literally a minute and a half of behind the scenes and movie footage okay. of them crashing cars and just doing the car stunts. Uh, Quiet Place 2 dropped a new trailer, and it looks like Emily Blunt and John Krasinski want more money from Paramount because the whole thing that happened with that is Paramount Plus is starting to feel the HBO Max of it all. 
because they're like, oh, we're going to put Quiet Place 2, Mission Impossible 7, and Top Gun Maverick on Paramount Plus 45 days after it opens. But when people have things in their contracts that guarantee them money based off of box office uh, releases, yeah. you can kind of see why people want to make sure they've got their money in hand. Yeah. So that's uh, something that's been happening. Huh. And then uh, I don't know if we, do we want to go with the Ben Affleck story? It's yeah, let's wrap up with that because it's just kind of f- stupid funny. And I will say funny. this: Ben Affleck standing outside with a cigarette doing the sigh. It's one of my two favorite uh, uh, memes to send to people when I've just had enough. <laughs> and I like the one of him where where they put the caption in, when you hear the toy box open for the third time today. <laughs> I have. I have that it, is a man of our times. It, inside joke. I've got that one on hot standby on my phone, and then uh, nobody else will be able to see this. Uh, I'll, I'll show Mike maybe if I can find it. Where the hell did it go? I just oh, there this it is. is we put on Patreon if we had one. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, yeah, I see it. <laughs> I've got that one and uh, uh, the Ben Affleck one on hot standby. And also this one from Super ba- Super Bad. <laughs> so, all right. It's just one. I'll, if, if, if I ever send you that, you know that I've just had enough. <laughs> so the actual story that we were leading to, because everyone's going to think that the story was coming, and then we've got that little gap in the middle that basically kind of puts us through. So – a are you woman, are you podcast editing me in the middle of this? No, it's just comedic callback and piss taking. Okay. So anyway, uh, there's apparently this. Are you are you uh, air checking me? You. Mo- <laughs> 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 so there's this a dating app called Raya, which apparently celebrities and other people have seemed to be using lately. Rich folk. Well, it's only like eight dollars a month from what the the stories I've been reading are. So I don't know if it's so much rich folk as just you know people who who want to be more premium in their dating. But yeah. this woman matched with someone who said that they were Ben Affleck, and she's like, oh, obviously not. She unfollows him. She then puts out a TikTok where she's like, remembering that time that I matched with Ben Affleck, blah, 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 blah. And then the second part of the video turns to a vi- to an actual video from Ben Affleck, and he's like, why did you unfollow me? It's me. <laughs> and just, you know, it, you, know it, it, you have to remember those, those old days in the internet where everybody thought that they knew someone that knew Britney Spears' hairdresser and could totally get you a date. Yeah. And now we've gotten to the point where it's like, yeah, sure, Ben Affleck, all right, and they're making another Batman. And then you get that video and it's like, ah. Uh, wow, that's unfortunate. I want to hang out with Ben Affleck. Oh, totally. Or – I want to go to a baseball game with him. That would be even more fun. But you'd have to go to a Red Sox game. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I think it'd be fun to just go to a game or uh, that. Or a, can you imagine going to a Patriots game with him? Oh, boy. God, it'd be amazing. Oh, I bet. He, he just, you know, he's a hometown boy. He gets yeah. into it. Oh, that's great. Well, good I'll for him. Like, come hang out with us. We'll pay for the popcorn. I always think about that. I just like, I just want like one super famous friend like that. You, you can just text him. He's like, Ben, Ben, I don't know what I'm doing, man. And then you send him the cigarette meme and he's like, oh man, if you're sending me that, that means you are obviously <laughs> at the door and I'm sorry, dude. Let's go to a Patriots game. Oh, that's awesome. It's like, hey, you coming over this weekend or you out on me again? <laughs> Is it your place or my place this weekend? I, I don't remember. Hey, Ben, you got this, right? <laughs> Look, Ben, all I'm saying is you should have gotten it in writing because Warner, Warner Brothers would have had to give you three no, more Batman No, movies. no, it's Superstar. I'll pay for the Sam Adams this week. I've got it. Don't worry about that $9 beer. Anyways, uh, Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com joins me every week on the show to talk about movies and such. Uh, make sure you check out the podcast, Overdue Rentals. Uh, links are at the bottom of the page along with the Cinema Blend stuff. And, uh, Mike, you have a good weekend. You as well.